big hunt for India's biggest thief, Nirav Modi, is hotting up. More than 11,000 crores siphoned off one of India's biggest banks, the Punjab National Bank. This is the biggest corporate fraud that has taken place in India. In 2017, Forbes magazine released their annual list of billionaires as well as the richest people in India. Diamantier Nirav Modi appeared on both lists. A few months down the line, he was featured in a very different list altogether. India's most wanted. It all fell apart for Nirav Modi with a scam. A scam that amounted to over 11,000 crore rupees. A scandal which shook the entire banking system of our nation. Modi was born into a family of jewelers and grew up in Belgium. Later, he moved to India and started working with his uncle, Mehul Choksi, owner of Gitanjali Gems, another co-accused in the scam. Nirav Modi eventually started his own diamond firm, Firestar, and he began making his way up. But there were hundreds of jewelers with deep pockets in India. So how did Nirav Modi keep getting the spotlight? Well, this. In 2010, Nirav Modi became the first Indian jeweler to be featured on the cover of the auction catalogue of Christie's. This Golconda diamond necklace was eventually sold for $3.56 million. Enough to have the spotlight on you, right? See, Nirav dreamt big and he got down to making those dreams a reality. Soon, he and his designs were being talked about in the elite circles. And not just talked about, they were being worn too. Sonam Kapoor, Priyanka Chopra, Anushka Sharma, and even Kate Winslet. Nirav Modi's designs were a hit across the globe. In 2015, Nirav Modi opened a store on Madison Avenue in New York, followed by stores in places such as Hong Kong, London, Macau, Beijing, and Singapore. The declaration of opening 100 stores worldwide by 2025 reeked of ambition and self-belief. Nirav Modi became a premier luxury brand. Some sources suggest that even an IPO was in consideration. According to the 2017 Forbes list, his worth was around $1.8 billion. But did anyone notice or even think, where are all these big bucks coming from? All the money that was pumped into his businesses, his stores, marketing, top tier brand ambassadors, all of this. Well, there were certainly rumors. Author Pawan Lal recalled that in an interview, he questioned Nirav Modi about his funding and the various rumours that were circulating back then. One of them being that he borrowed money from banks and maybe he's defaulting them. Modi just brushed it off, calling it speculation. But what was the truth? What was actually the case? This is where the Brady House branch of Punjab National Bank is located. In January 2018, some officials of Nirav Modi's firms approached the Brady House branch of PNB for availing buyer's credit. Buyer's credit basically is a short-term loan provided to an importer by an overseas lender. A letter of undertaking or an LOU is issued by the importer's bank. Normally while giving an LOU, the bank would ask for a cash margin, an amount deposited with the bank by the borrower. When the bank officials asked for a 100% cash margin, the officials from Modi's firm claimed that they had in the past been allowed credit without any margin. And that was the eureka moment. See, this was very unusual, not really the regular practice. And when the firms claimed that they had been allowed this even before, this raised all sorts of alarm bells. The lead role played in this scam is by a document called a Letter of Undertaking or LOU. Okay, so here's what an LOU is and how Nirav Modi orchestrated an entire multi-crore scam with the help of it. An LOU is a bank guarantee that allows someone to borrow money from another bank's foreign branch. So in case the customer of the bank is unable to pay it back to the foreign branch, the bank which issues the LOU is liable to pay it back. So in this case, if Nirav Modi defaulted on any payment to a foreign branch, it was PNB's liability. The foreign branch is giving the loan on the basis of the LOU, not on the basis of the credit worthiness of the customer. That is Nirav Modi. Nirav Modi's officials claimed that they had availed LOUs without cash margin in the past. Without sticking to the norms, Nirav Modi was availing these LOUs. Not just in 2017 or 2016 or 2015, but from 2011. So, how was this fraud allowed to continue for so long? Did the higher-ups at PNB know anything about this? What was the reason that India's second-largest government-owned bank 
continued to be the victim of all of this. A few officials were alleged to be involved in this scheme. But it doesn't make sense that a scam of this magnitude would go unnoticed by the bank. There's another character in this story called Swift. Swift is a messaging network for banks and other financial institutions across the globe. When an LOU was issued, the message was sent through Swift. Now, only if PNB could have been alerted by Swift, but there was a glitch. PNB CBS, which is basically their core banking system, was not synced with Swift. Had that been the case, the fraud would have been detected much earlier. So the colluding officials of the bank would send information on SWIFT to the overseas branches about the LOUs, but they did not record these entries on CBS. And so the fraud carried on for many years. Nostro account is an account that a bank holds in another bank overseas in a foreign currency. Now on the basis of the LOU, the foreign branch would remit the funds to the Nostro account of the Indian bank. In this case, Axis Bank, Allahabad Bank, Yuko Bank was some of those foreign branches providing funds to PNB's Nostro account. At that time, LOUs for gems and jewellery had validity of 90 days. But in this case, these LOUs were rolled over. So how many LOUs were there? As per accounts, more than 12 100. Yes, more than 1200 LOUs that Nero Modi was using on PNB's name to get money from foreign branches. The fact that a fraud of this scale was not discovered indicates that the audit processes were not thorough enough. So many checks and balances were in place and this went on unnoticed for more than six years. According to a Bloomberg report, Nero Modi also used his shell companies to execute repeated transactions of the same item within the companies to generate invoices for LOUs. The initial assessment of the fraud made by PNB valued it at around 280 crores, but it was later valued at more than 11,000 crore rupees, which is a big difference. To put it in perspective, that was around a quarter of PNB's net worth reported in 2017. Some valuations value the fraud amount to be even higher. Since the scam became public, agencies like the CBI and Enforcement Directorate have become involved. Stores have been shut, people have lost their jobs. ED has been attaching properties, valuables and other assets of Nirav Modi to recover the amounts due, even auctioning off some of his personal collectibles. Eventually, if the recovery is not full, the government, who is the biggest shareholder in PNB, might have to bail it out using the taxpayers' money. After the scam came out, the RBI did start tightening some screws. Ordering linking of SWIFT with CBS for banks and discontinuing issuance of LOUs for trade credit for imports into India. A few days before the scam was unveiled, Nirav Modi, Mehul Choksi and some of the family members left India in early Jan of 2018. In 2019, Nirav Modi was cited in London and he was even questioned by an English journalist on camera. He was then arrested after India intervened and has since been in jail in London. India's extradition request for Nirav Modi was finally approved by the UK in 2021. And as expected, Nirav Modi appealed. We don't know when or how Nirav Modi will come back to India or even how his trial will pan out eventually. From reaching unprecedented heights in India's jewelry ecosystem to plummeting the way he did, all this razzmatazz has taken the sheen of India's banking system. This is the story of a scam that rocked India's banking system. We're on a mission to uncover scams that have affected the people of India and bring them straight to you. Are there other scams you'd want us to dig into? Tell us in the comments. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. The kinds of videos we want to make are to ask fun and compelling questions, explore weird and intriguing stories and delve into secret histories. So if that's something you're interested in, this is the channel for you. Don't forget to tell us what you like in the comments.